Hello, good to see you. That button on the mute key, very important. Welcome back. It is Tuesday, August 25th. We are headed for what looks to be some Genesis fun. Um, I don't know about you, but I am super jazzed about being with you today. check to see where Finker stopped. I'm having one of those slow days and you'll have to sort of uh, uh, deal with me. Um, uh, my stress collects in my, um, it kept collects in my shoulders. Maybe you have stress that collects in your shoulders. Mine also has been known to uh, sort of take refuge in my calves, which means that I wake up in the morning and I can't walk. My ankles hurt so bad. And so today's one of those uh, bad ankle days. Hi, friends. Good to see you. Um, good to see you indeed. And so um, if I'm a little late today, it's because, well, I'm moving rather slowly today. So um, uh, so you'll just bear with me as we shoot through um, uh, fun times here. And... Um, Sounds like I'm not prepared, but I'm actually am prepared. 4140. I just forgot what exact verse Pastor um, stopped on yesterday. Um, I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a spectacular day. I need to make one share, and then we're going to be good to go. Uh, and I hope that you are having a, a great day. As for those of you who have asked me about the hurricane, we are actually in the hurricane, Laura, hurricane Laura's path. Um, that should make for some fun Bible study on Thursday. Um, Thursday's when we are expected to get the full brunt of that. And so um, it'll probably just hit us as an actual hurricane. Um, but nevertheless, uh, probably 75 mile an hour winds and the like. And so it'll be fun um, in Louisiana on Thursday. I'll, I'll, um, I should be able to be on, except if we lose our power and then we'll, you know, we'll figure out what we're going to do. Either you'll have the Dean or you'll have me. Um, so, yeah, either of those. Um, Genesis 41, 40 following. All right. And good to go. All right. So remember, this is a discussion. It's an, it's a, it's an ongoing discussion. And, and in a discussion means you are to participate. Um, uh they're coming to take me away. Do you hear the sirens? Um, you are to participate and you can add your questions, comments, and thoughts in the channel and I will respond to them as best I can. Uh, hello, Linda, Brian, Mike, uh, along with uh, Colonel Davis, Virginia, um, Willa, Kathy, um, Beth, good to see you, Cheryl, Jean, Marilyn, Carol, Bobby Joe, uh, Sue, her whole family, always, Judy, Suzanne, Debbie. Oh, look at this. Ah, the gang's all here. Terry Lynn and Brian. Good, good, good. Um, so let's start with where he stopped, which was verse 41 in Genesis chapter um, 40, 41. Um, I want to back up just a touch. Um, Joseph has a dream. I'm sorry. Joseph has a bunch of bad stuff happening to him. No doubt the bad stuff that's happening to him. Sold into slavery. Uh, left for dead by his brothers. They wanted to kill him. Um, he then rises to the top of Potiphar's uh, household. And he's falsely me too Somebody accuses him of, of being naughty. And uh, he had nothing to do with it. He's then tossed into jail where he helps somebody with their dream. He did The, the person is then like, then it's like, I'll remember you when I get out. And they don't. And so then there is another, um, another dream, this time Pharaoh's dream. And um, the cupbearer remembers. Oh, I know. And uh, yeah, Terry Lynn's from my hometown of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And... Um, uh, Terry Lynn, uh, sometime I, I I I know you go to Good Shepherd now, but 
Uh, didn't you used to go to first? Um, I want to make sure that I uh, know the people. I try to get to know people who are, um, as, as with all sort of social media things, the live numbers don't sort of reflect the, the offline numbers. So we usually, you know, in our heyday during the pandemic, we were in the 60s for the live, but um, in the thousands on the um, offline stuff. So after the live stuff. So um, let Pharaoh appoint uh, to uh, proceed to appoint overseers over the land and take one fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years. So there's gonna be seven plentiful years and then seven bad years. And Joseph suggests that Pharaoh take um, one fifth of everything that's, that's grown during the unfaithful year, the bad years. Um, I thought so. I thought so. Um, I thought so, Terry Lynn. And I was at the merger service as a vicar and I dropped the processional cross. Anyway, so, uh, that, but that is a song for another time. Um, and let them gather the food of, of these good years that are coming and store up the grain under the authority of Pharaoh to, for the cities and let them keep it. So let's bank the food in order to use the food during the bad years. And since we have warning that it's going to happen, okay, so we have warning that it's going to happen. Um, what's great about this is Egypt will be the only one that has food. Um, I was just trying to remove my shoe and that was a bad idea. A lot of pain. Um, so food shall be reserved for the land against the seven years of famine that are occurred to the land of Egypt so that the land may not perish through the famine. And you know what's great about this also is that this just shows that God, what God is up to. Okay. What God is up to is that he wants to save Judah, Perez, the line. He wants to be faithful to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so all that Joseph goes through, he goes through for the good of his family, for the good of those who are, um, well, the promise. And so they leave him for dead and they do all of that stuff. They leave him for dead. They, they do all of that stuff. And, oh, the shoe's off. Um, and uh, it turns out, it turns out good for them. Yeah, there's a lot of pain there. Uh, this proposal pleased Pharaoh, verse 37. And now we're about to get to our text. And Pharaoh said, um, can we find a man like this in whom the spirit is the spirit of God? So Joseph has the spirit of God. Everything Joseph does, um, all the while, by the way, Maggie's right. Joseph has no idea that that God is working salvation for his family through this. He's doing the thing that you do as you, um, as you go through this life. And what's so great about this is this gives you an example of your Christian life. So oftentimes bad stuff happens to us and we think, what have I done? Why doesn't God love me? And we don't think that God is actually doing good for you, that he is refining your faith, that he's keeping you from trusting in your stuff, that he's, that he's rescuing you through these trials and tribulations and that you're, you're going to be stronger on the other end of it. So often today, um, we're sort of so sheltered from, from any adversity that any adversity that occurs, um, we think is from death is from the devil. And it's not necessarily from the devil. And even if the devil did it, um, God is not a, above um, duping the devil so much that the devil does bad things and it ends up working out for God. That's the way you should view the thing. God and the devil are not equal. So when God, when the devil does bad things, um, God is so much your God and looking out so much for you that he even turns the bad that the devil does to you into good. And so you're going to win no matter what happens in this life. No matter what happens in this life, um, you're going to win. And what a great example. Have you considered my servant, uh, my servant Job, which is just something else, you know? I mean, it's just, all right. But the faith and the, and the, and God looking out for, for, um, Joseph is so obvious to, to everyone, including Pharaoh, that everyone pushes Joseph forward. Uh, Wunder can, uh, he's like a, a, he's like a, he's like a, a, a young prodigy. He's, he's, he, everything works out for him and everything works out for good 
for those who are around him. And so um, it's hard not to elevate him. He gets elevated in prison. He gets elevated in Potiphar's house. And now he's eleva- He's about to be elevated to the top of Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh said to Joseph, verse 39, Since... Um, Uh, since God has shown all of this to you, there is none so um, discerning uh, and wise. Um, so the, 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 the plan is store, 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 one-fifth, there's none so intelligent and um, skillful or, 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 um, yeah, that, that works. 30, um, uh, the Greek word used there is, uh, try reading Greek in the right direction, George. It makes it a lot easier to read it. Um, uh, it's not Sophia, but it is um, it, it is a word that means intelligent or sharp, clever. So you're 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 a you're a cle- you're a clever man. Um, end of Star Trek, uh, Mr. Data. You're a clever man in any time period. Joseph is a very very clever man, um, but behind his cleverness is Jesus. And Cheryl, you are exactly right. That would be the the work that I would do. Hi, Rick. The Lord be with you as well. All right, so um, since God has shown you this and since you're so sharp and since everything you do is blessed, I shall put you over my house and all my people shall order themselves at you as you command. Only as regard to the throne will I be greater than you. I want you to think about this. So like only in regard to... Only when it pertains to the seat, the throne, the sovereignty, am I greater than you? Am I ahead of you? Like, I just want to sort of... Tim Scott has a great story. In one generation, his family goes from from his grandfather picking cotton to um, him being a U.S. senator. Um, in one gener- in, in, I'm sorry, in, in one generation... His grandfather lived long enough to see him um, as a congressman. This is a great story, too. Um, Better than Bron the Broken is Joseph the Suffering. Um, And if you were to look at Joseph on the outside, you're like, nothing goes your way. You are unlucky. Or at least not lucky. But in actuality, Joseph is incredibly gifted by God. And... And he is, um, he is so gifted by God that other people are gifted from just being around Joseph. And really, what should really make you smile in all of this, as I said earlier, this giftedness is related to the promise to his dad. So his dad has, a, has a, a, God has good gifts for his dad. And so his dad... The blessing that goes upon Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob then follows Joseph all the way out the well into Potiphar's house, back into prison, out of prison, into in, in, right before the king of, of, of Egypt, all the way to the head running of all of Egypt. And what's going to happen in 42 is to Egyptianize Joseph. And Pharaoh said, I will set you over all the land of Egypt. Call Aretz Mitzrayim. Over all the land of Egypt. Don't go right to God doesn't love me when bad things happen. When it gets cloudy and the hurricane hits or two. Now don't immediately think that God doesn't love you. And it, when it works out, don't immediately think that it's all about you. It could have all been about the good that he's going to work through you. 
so often American Christianity makes this all about you. And this is another aside. And while we are not going to get far today, so often American Christianity makes it all about you. And so, um, it's, 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 it's all about me. And we sort of listen to American Christianity like this. Could we get to the real part? I mean, this is great and all, but I'd really like that good part. And that good part is all about me. Well, and then when things work out for us, it's like, oh, look, God loves me. Well, he works out stuff that's good. Maybe not even for you only, but for others too. Uh, It's not all about you. It's about others too. Uh, And Christianity is not only about you being saved. It's about other people being saved too. And, and if that, that sort of, that seems obvious, but for me, at least in my preaching, it took me 10 years to realize that, you know, that, 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 that Christianity isn't only about God saving you, me, or other, uh, uh, you or me. It's really about God saving others too. And so the good that he works in your life may not just be about you. It may be about others. And we're going to see that the good that he works in this life is about his brothers and saving his brothers and their dad. Oh, are you having fun? I hope you're having fun. I hope you're having fun so far. Let's let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Pharaoh took his signet ring. And that's the sign. I saw the sign. It opened up my uh, <clears throat> That's the sign that he's acting on behalf of Pharaoh. That is the, um, that's the family marker. Now, now all the power, he, he has the, um, he miss he has the signet ring from his hand. The, so he can seal things for Pharaoh's and he put it on Pharaoh's hand and uh, on Joseph's hand. So he takes the ring and he puts it on him. And this is a ceremonial act, which conveys authority to Joseph. Joseph now acts on behalf of Pharaoh. And the only thing which is different between, oh yes, like Ben-Hur, Judah Ben-Hur. Um, uh, the only thing which, 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 the difference between Joseph and Pharaoh is that Pharaoh is the king and Joseph is his hand. This is the second time we've had signet. We had it earlier with um, with Judah giving Tamar his signet ring. And yes, uh, Jacoby, um, uh, uh, he could have sung, Joseph could have sung, I got the power! Sorry, that was painful. Anyway, um, and clothed him with garments of fine linen. This is a specific... Um, uh, sort of, he clothes him with this sort of Egyptian clothes. He slaps Egyptian clothes on him, um, a sort of, uh, 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 um, I mean, everything about Joseph is you're the son of Pharaoh. This is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. Um, I don't know, Maggie, if there's a different Pharaoh. I just know that, um, like Onesimus and Philemon, um, Onesimus was useless to Philemon for a time that he might be useful to St. Paul. Um, Joseph was jailed for the Me Too accusation and then finds himself useful to the jailer and also useful for the, um, for the king himself, Egyptian cotton. Um, the, the Septuagint has this as, um, a busanain, um, which is this sort of like flax linen, but it's, it's unique to, um, it's unique to Egypt. So I don't want to say Egyptian cotton, but you, but you should say, you know, this is unique Egyptian garments. 
and 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 this is we should sort of point this out as uh, which is interesting the ring and the garments and the love of pharaoh makes him a child of pharaoh like the sign of the holy cross the water and the word clothes us with white baptismal white and um as much as um uh Finker um, made the servants types of Christ yesterday. I want to sort of um, one up him by saying Joseph shows us our Christian life in the sense that um, what makes him, what gives him all the pop that he has is outside of him and it clothes him, it marks him and changes his identity. It literally changes his identity to the hand of Pharaoh. And he made him ride the second chariot in his second chariot. So like there's Pharaoh and then there's Joseph. And they called out before him, bow the knee. And thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. Can you believe this? And the way you should see this also is Joseph as a type of Christ we're Hebrews by adoption, and now a Hebrew is on the, at the right hand of Pharaoh. One of ours is at the right hand of Pharaoh, and that should sound familiar to you. See the Lord ascends in triumph, conquering king in royal state, riding on the clouds his chariot. What a great hymn. What a great hymn. Um, uh, there's another, uh, another Ascension Day hymn where, See the man of sorrows now. Jesus ascends, uh, adored by angels, man with God upon the throne. By his human nature, we, by faith, behold our own. Um, hymns don't count. Um, but, so you should see two things. You should see Joseph as, um, I can't help but identify with Joseph in all the bad that happens to him and all the good that happens to him. That's one. On the flip side, also, you going to work, buddy? I know there's a stranger outside, but you have to come here. Come back. Hey, hey, hey. Come here. Why are you all fretting? Nope. Look, he's like Uriah. He can't eat and celebrate while there's work to be done. Do you see this? He can't eat while there's work to be done. Isn't that spectacular? I don't know where um, where my uh, assistant is, but I might have to get the door. Um, um, must destroy intruders. Um, all right. He made him ride in the second chariot. He is um, second chariot. And they called out before him, bow the knee. It's okay, buddy. Come on. And thus, he set him over all the land of Egypt. There it is. Thor cannot eat while he's, um, while he's working. He just... Moreover, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh. Without your consent shall lift up hand nor foot no one in the land of Egypt. So Pharaoh, Joseph can tell, tell, tell the people in Egypt who wears a mask and who doesn't. He can tell them um, everything. And, and, and um, <laughs> um, he can do all of this because he is the right hand of Pharaoh. Matter what happens. Uh, Brandon Simino, Pastor Simino, second chariot, the new and greater Adam. That sounds really good. I like that. Um, I like that a lot. Okay. You like pizza, but will still deliver the, kill the guy who, who delivers it? 
Uh, that's that's a true story. There you go, buddy. All right. Um, Joseph gave him a new name. Does this sound familiar to you? Zaphenoth Panea, which um, possibly means that we're going to have some fun here because the NIV, the, the Concordia Study Bible, uh, says that this might mean the revealer of hidden things or that God speaks and he lives. Um, that's possible, but I don't believe that. Um, let's look at the Septuagint, because before we sort of guess what this means, um, uh, we need to sort of look at um, what it means in um, other languages. The Septuagint is sort of... Um, and the early translators of this translated this name into um, the name Soter Cosmu, and then uh, Ver, uh, Jerome translates it Salvator Mundi. This is important. Okay, um, not going to take anything away from the the, the NIV text note. Um, you know, like if you want it to be a uh, revealer of hidden things, or God speaks and He lives. That's good. But Jerome, uh, Jerome and the early sort of Greek scholars that were translating this um, sort of made notes that this was Soter Cosmu, Savior of the World. It's in the Latin as Salvator Mundi, Savior of the World. Now, I want you to sort of take that in for a second, just sort of. Because name names mean things. They mean things. They have a, they have a, they have a meaning. They have a purpose. They're just not just out there. Um, they mean something. And I want you to sort of take this in as, as Pharaoh recognized Joseph. As the savior of the world. Now just pause for a second here and think this through. There is no way that you are not to look at Joseph. As your as as like Christ, because that's what they did, and he's not even the line, and so all this is going on in order to save you, in order to save um, Judah and Perez. All this is going on in order to save Jacob, and and he recognizes him. Pharaoh recognizes him as you're the savior of the world. Now, if you don't want to make a big deal of that. Um, I usually tend to think that that the folks that are um, contemporaries of or around the time when they're translating these things are probably better at translating it than the smart people today. But if you want to take this as a revealer of hidden things or that God speaks and he lives, I'm okay with that. But just be aware that the earliest commentators and the earliest translators of this translated this as who gave him a new name, which was Soter Cosmu, Savior of the world. You have saved the world. And that was so exciting to the Thor, he's done. And Pastor uh, Simino's right. This goes alongside with, he was sold out by 12 His brothers betrayed back on the job again. So, um, so, uh, yeah, this is kind of cool. Um, back to work again. Um, Joseph was 30. Oh, wait, I'm not done with this. Pharaoh called his name Zara, uh, Zaf Anath Panea, and he gave him in marriage to Asenath. And that is um, a girl whose name means um, he who, um, or, or, um, uh, the daughter of Potipharia, the priest of On. 
So uh, that dude's name means um, the one who's the, uh, who the sun god has given. Um, and uh, her name means uh, belong to the goddess of Neith. Uh Well, okay. If you're going to walk like an Egyptian, you're going to end up marrying Egyptian wives. And um, I, for some reason, it doesn't seem to matter. But um, probably because Joseph has taken one for the team. He is where he is. He's doing what he's doing in order to save his family. So he gets a wife. So, so he's dressed like an Egyptian, walks like an Egyptian, walk like... Uh, and then he... And then he... Um, and then he, he, he marries an Egyptian from an Egyptian family. And he went out over the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old, which is just incredibly young. Which is just incredibly young. I mean, I just can't get over the fact that you should be aware of that, that that is still incredibly young. Jesus does not work, start his ministry until 30. Um, and for all this is to happen in, um, in uh, Joseph's life, he entered the service of the king, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of, e of Pharaoh and went through all the land of Egypt, taking a tour. You are not... Uh, I don't know what Cindy's talking about. Um, uh, and you... Um, and, and I think... Uh, Brandon is right too. The fact that he, uh, Pastor Simino, excuse me, the fact fact that he marries a, um, um, uh, the fact that he does this and he marries outside should make you comforted as well, because um, God is going to family you from the outside um, through Jesus. During the seventy-seven plentiful years, the earth produced abundantly. Uh, it produced abundantly. Um, and he gathered up the food for these seven years, which occurred in the land of Egypt, and he put in every city the food from the fields around it. Um, and so he's preparing for the, the issue which is coming. And stored up grain in abundance, in great abundance. Mode. In great abundance. He stored it up in, in fierce abundance. Like the sand of the sea. Until he ceased to measure it. For it could not be measured. And so. Um, uh, I have no idea Lauren. Whether that. I, I don't think so. I, I'm, but I have. I, I can't answer your question on that. I would have to. Um, I would have to go with one of the. Um other pastors in the in the channel maybe to help you out on that I, that's just not i didn't see that in my readings but that doesn't mean um before the year of famine came two sons were born to joseph the firstborn was manasseh Um, so the, 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 the two boys are born. Um, so all of that, which was all of the granaries are open and they're all sort of getting food and they get so much food that they can't sort of, um, they can't, uh, they can't contain it all. Um, and so like while everybody's rich, while, um, um, while everybody's rich, so is Joseph. He has, he has, he has a kid. Um, 
and so his his firstborn is named um, Manasseh. For God has made me forget all the hardship and all my father's house. And when you have that in Hebrew, when you have one of those moments where 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 like somebody has named something and then the, and then somebody says something afterwards, that's the meaning of its name. So it's like um um and in the in the NIV test tech note, test note is is really good. Manasseh sounds like the Hebrew word for making uh to forget. God has made me forget all of the 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 crud that has gone on um and all of my father's house. Uh now now Luther takes this as do not take this in a negative way. Like um like like the teenagers say nowadays, I'm so done. I'm just done. I'm done with this. I'm done. I'm so done. I'm done. Um, Luther's quote is, I see that God would take away the reliance which I placed upon my father. For God is a jealous God and will not suffer the heart to have any other foundation to rely on but him alone. And so, um, so very important. Um, um, this is just so, so very important. I think that, that Joseph even sees now, you're starting to see the signs. Um, I saw the sign. Um, you're starting to see the signs that Joseph at least understands that God is working good in his life. And so he's like, look, every bad thing that's happened in my life, God has helped me forget. Manasseh. And I don't think it's like I'm over dad. I'm over this whole thing. I don't believe that's what's going on here. It it's like um, everything that's bad. God has 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 made me forget all of my hardship and all of all the bad that my brothers did to me. And in, in the second, he named Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in the land of affliction. And again, um, I'm going to look at the note, and I know what it says. Ephraim is. It sounds like the Hebrew word making fruitful. And so the names of the kids demonstrate the faith of the one who's naming them. God has made me forget my hardship and all the bad they did to me. And the second one is um, God has made me afflict. Uh, um, um, God's made me um, forget my affliction. He's making me fruitful, obviously. Seven years of plenty that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end. And the seven years of famine began, as Joseph had said. There was famine in all the lands, but in the land of, G uh, of Egypt, what? There is lachem. There is bread. There's bread in Mitzrayim, because Joseph's there. And the bread in Mitzrayim, all of, all of Egypt is going to rejoice in this bread, which is solely there to save God's people from famine and to restore Joseph and his brothers. See, we only think about things like our belly when we're thinking about the bad and the good that happens to us. But in actuality, God's trying to save you. Through all the good and the bad that occurs, he's trying to save you. 55. When all the land of Egypt was hungry... The people cried to the Pharaoh for lacham, for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph. <laughs> uh, what he says for you to do, do. Pastor Simino, where Joseph is there is bread of salvation. Where Jesus is there, there is true bread of salvation. And that's, and I think that is a wonderful Wonderful, wonderful observation. Just a good one. So when the famine had spread over all the land, Joseph opened all of the storehouses. Um, that is it's sort of, it's, it's not really, it's, it's more like he opened up all the places that were opened. Like they put grain everywhere. And so like, like the, the, the Hebrew here is sort of suggestive that they, they tucked grain during the plentiful times away anywhere they could tuck grain away. 
And so like Joseph opens all of those places up and sold it to the Egyptians for the famine was severe in the land. And moreover, and here it comes, all of the Haaretz, all the world, came to Joseph in order to buy grain in Egypt because the famine was severe over all the land. It is teed up perfectly for what amounts to be a spectacular reunion between Joseph and his brothers. And God, who is rich in mercy, is blessing the children of Israel and saving them even in their evil. He's using the evil of the brothers in order to save the brothers, like he used the evil of the cross in order to save us. Hi, Travis. Thanks, Travis. That, that means a lot to me. Travis just told me that here from Cincinnati, I've watched you for years and have got to join your Facebook Live for the first time. Travis, I'm sorry that I'm about to end. <laughs> ah! Hi, Travis. Bye, Travis. Uh, but um, I want you to take this in, especially Travis. It's all about Jesus. It's all about saving you. And if you if you try to make Christianity about, about your successes, about your becoming um, 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 rich, about all the good that's going to happen um, and uh, all of all of the success you're going to have and all the green you're going to have. Make it rain. Um, uh, if you make it all about God blessing you, then you are missing the point. The good that God does to you, he does to save you in Jesus. And the not good that he does to you is good because he does it to save you. Just And how do you know this? The suffering and death of Jesus. How else do you know this? Look at the life of Joseph. Look at the life of Joseph. So if you've got a God that's neutral in saving you, then you are not understanding the Christian gospel. Not at all. God is not neutral with Joseph. He's not. Everything he does, he does to save his people. And so bad happens to Joseph, evil from his brothers, in order that God could save his evil brothers and Joseph and bring about salvation for all mankind. Out of Egypt I have called my son. And so you should read this, especially the next part. You should read this with your eyes on Joseph, both as a Christ figure and as a picture of the church which receives bad and good from the Lord's hand and calls it good because it's God doing it because God is out to save us. Tomorrow. Because I expect to still have power. But before we go, I want you to... Um, I want you to make sure that you go to the Higher Things store, uh, store.higherthings.org, and get new merchandise like this cup. They have mugs right now, but I'm understanding they're going to have more and more with our new um, brand. Um, Higher Things provides this Bible study. Um, I remember when, when, the COVID, when the COVID hit, I was like, I'd like to do a Bible study for my people. And um, uh, Higher Things was like, well, we'd like to help you, and we'll distribute it. So... They make the Bible study possible so that you can receive it, so you could be gifted in these dark times. And so um, time flies when you're having fun, Maggie. Have a blessed day, and I will see you tomorrow. And I, hopefully I will see you Thursday. Keep me in your prayers. Uh, losing power is never good for Sophia. Um, and the generator's packed away, so um, Sophia doesn't do well without power, so you want to pray for us not to lose power here. Um, and uh, I'll see you in a hop, skip, and a jump. Have a blessed day. Take care.